So, living in Western New York does not always give me the freshest, tastiest ingredients when I want to make wine in the wintertime. So, what are you supposed to do? So, when I want to make wine, the first thing I look for is something that tastes great. In the winter, most of your produce that you can get from the grocery stores doesn't always have the most flavorful taste when you, when you try them. So what do I do in the winter time? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. You can use bottled juice. As long as it's 100% concentrate and does not have any preservatives, you're usually good to go. So I was really excited when I saw this one. This is a cactus fruit juice. It's called prickly pear cactus cactus water. Um, so when I read the ingredients and saw that it was mostly filtered water and cactus juice, I right away said, I got to try this. So the thing about trying these is there's no recipe. I have base recipes that use canned juice or bottle juice, and I'm going to be following one of those and tweaking it to fit the needs of this juice so that I can make a delicious tasting wine. And I'm going to be making it right into the secondary fermentator. No need to go to the bucket because we don't have anything to strain in this case. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crack one of these guys open and I'm going to give it a taste and I'm going to adjust my recipe depending on how this guy tastes. So let's try. Okay, first off, I should note, it does smell really, really good. Very, very light in color, so that means we'll probably get a colorless or clear wine. So that's interesting. This tastes more like a flavored water than actual juice, but that's okay. I'm actually going to try and leave this straight because I do want the light flavor of the cactus pear to show through. This is not very sweet. This is going to need a lot of sugar. It's a very interesting flavor. It does have a cactusy, like the taste when you eat the cactus green undertones to it. So I wonder if they crushed some of the actual cactus leaves with the fruit to make this juice. But very, very delicious. So. I'm going to go ahead and get started by weighing out my sugar. I'm going to do three pounds of sugar because of how light this tastes. Perfect. Three pounds. Three pounds of sugar going into my pot. Along with two of these. And now I'm going to simmer it over medium low heat to melt all the sugar together. So let's prep our bottle. I've already gone ahead and sanitized them and my airlock as well. So next things we need to think about adding once our sugar syrup has reached a boil is our chemical. So we're going to be needing yeast nutrient, acid blend, Hectic enzyme, Campton tablets if you so choose to use them, and tannin. So for acid bun, I'm going to put in one teaspoon and I'm just going to put those right in the bottle now. One teaspoon of yeast nutrient, quarter teaspoon of tannin, And I'm going to do half a teaspoon of pectic enzyme. Hampton tablet will have to wait until our mixture cools. So a lot of wine makers will actually bring their sugar mixture to a boil. I actually don't. I actually just warm the liquid up until all the sugar dissolves and then I just pour it right in. I don't wait till it gets to that boil or boil it for a minute. Um, so yeah, my Liquid is to temperature now, sugar's all melted, I'm just gonna pour it right in. Perfect. And now I'm gonna top it off with one of these to 
until it's about there. Perfect. I don't like any more airspace than that in my bottles just because um, you know, the way that fermentation works. You do need some airspace in there, but this is perfect. All right. So now we're just going to wait till this cools completely before I add this. I'm going to put this on empty first and give this a shake. Excellent. Yeah. So you can already see it foaming in there. That's a really great sign. So now I'm going to take my airlock and I'm going to add some water to the airlock right up to that line. Oh, there's one other tip I'd like to show you guys too. On the winemakers forum that I am regularly a part of, uh, somebody was talking about how to avoid fruit flies getting into your wine and they said that if you put a whole clove like this into your wine uh, airlock the smell will deter them so we're going to try that out. Now, granted, right now in Western New York, there's no fruit flies, they're all dead, they've died for the season, but this might be still sitting around by the time summer comes back. So better safe than sorry. And if it's as simple as that, that is a tried and true hack in my book because I hate fruit flies. I'll come back in a few hours and add my Campton tablet. And then the following day, I will add my yeast. In this case, I'm going to be using K1V116. This has cooled down enough so that we can add that Canton tablet too. So I'm just going to take one and I'm going to put it between two spoons. And for me, this was the easiest way to crush them. I just press the two spoons together. And then it reduces the Campton tablet to powder. And now I'm just going to add that in. Smells good. Give it a mix. All right. And now we wait another 12 hours. All right. So I'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys, it's the very next day and we are ready to measure our potential alcohol content into our hydrometer and add our yeast. Since I made this right in the secondary fermentator, it's pretty easy. I'm just going to pour a little bit into my tube. That should be enough. Make sure you give it a good smell. Make sure everything smells right. You don't want to smell any smells of acetone, no smells of vinegar, and no smells of wet cardboard. All right, now we're gonna measure with our hydrometer. Put it into our fluid, give it a nice little spin. So this actually is much sweeter than I anticipated. Yep, so we've got 1.140 or 18% potential alcohol at start. Waste not, want not. I always pour my measuring liquid back in. And now I'm going to add my yeast. This is the K1V116. All I'm going to do is open up this packet and I'm going to shake it right on top. I do not bloom my yeast first. I know other 
winemakers do, but I just pour the pack right in on top. Closing it up and give it a shake. Give it a swirl. Right, so now you wanna come back, you wanna give this another shake every day or every two days for the first week or two weeks. Once it slows down, then you can just let it sit for about three months to six months. Usually after three months, there'll be some sediment on the bottom here of the jug. You wanna make sure you rack into a new container so that you're not fermenting on top of the sediment and then wait until it's done. Measure again at the final. Once it's stopped moving, you are pretty much good with bottling it. Just make sure you add your um, potassium sorbate stabilizer so that no further fermentation can happen inside of those bottles once you've bottled it. Otherwise, you'll get bottle and cork explosion. All right, so that's all we've got for this video. Thank you for joining me today. Make sure you give a big thumbs up if you like what you saw. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about today's wine making or any other wines you'd like me to try. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode of all the fun going on here in the lab. And as be like the bats in the belfry and hit that bell so you get notified when we upload. Thanks for joining me again, and I'll see you next time here in the lab. Bye!